it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Let's go! Chapter 6, lesson number 7. We are now moving on to look at geometric sequences. Yeah! So, first of all, what is a geometric sequence? Well, let's think back a couple of lessons to arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence is when you're adding the same thing every time. Obviously, though, we are not doing that for this sequence. Bam, bam, bam! But what are we doing? Perfect. We are doubling the previous term in order to get the next term. So if you double one, you get two. If you double two, you get four. In other words, we're multiplying by two every time. So here you can see that the first term is one and the terms are multiplied by two each time. Because we are not adding the same thing, it is not an arithmetic sequence. It is known as bam, 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 a geometric sequence. So a geometric sequence is where you multiply by the same number each time. In the sequence above then, the first term is 1, so you can say that you would have A equals 1. A is your first term. And there is a, what's known as, a common ratio, which is denoted R, equals, and because you're multiplying by 2 every time, you would say R equals 2. In order to find out your common ratio, all you have to do is take the second term and divide it by the first. Or you can take the third term and divide it by the second. Or you can take the fifth term and you can divide it by the fourth, and so on. Basically, take the next term and divide it by the previous term. That will give you the common ratio. So here, if you do 2 divided by 1, well, that's 2, so you know you've multiplied by 2. Or if you do 2, 4 divided by 2, you still get 2, so again, you know you've multiplied by 2. So that is a way of finding your common ratio. Basically, take un plus 1 and divide it by un. Really, in general, then, you would have r equals un plus 1 over un, and that is your common ratio, so let's use that in order to find out both the values of A and R. So look at the following sequences. We've got 1, 4, 16, 64. So here, A is, where's the value of A, Maria? Perfect, A is going to be 1. Good. And Mazamel, the value of R is? Brilliant, it's just going to be 4. You can easily tell that you're multiplying by 4 every time, or you could just do 4 divided by 1, which gives you 4. Or you could have done 16 divided by 4, or you could have done 64 divided by 16. Either way, you get a common ratio of 4. For the next one, for 27, 9, 3, 1, 1 third, 1 ninth, the value of A, Mary Lou, would be, good, that's just 27, it's your first term. And R, your common ratio, Aaron, is, brilliant, that's going to be 1 third. If you do 9 divided by 27, well that's a fraction 9 over 27, which simplifies to 1 third. So really you're dividing by 3 every time, but you would say the common ratio would be 1 third. You could also have done 3 divided by 9, or you could have done 1 ninth divided by 1 third. Who knows why you would do that? Either way, you would end up with 1 third for your common ratio. For the next one, you've got 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. Kyle, the value of A is brilliant. That's just 1. Good. It's your first term. And the common ratio, what would that be, Amna? Brilliant. If you do negative 1 divided by 1, you get negative 1. So that is your common ratio. You can see that you're multiplying by negative 1 every time. Woo! Last one, you've got 18, negative 12, 8, negative 16 over 3, and 32 over 9, and so on. Malika, the value of A is... Good, that is going to be 18. Brilliant. That is your first term. And, Avina, the value of R would be... Good, that's going to work out to be negative two-thirds. If you do negative 12 divided by 18, think your fraction, that's a negative, you get 12 over 18, and that simplifies to two-thirds. So negative two-thirds is your common ratio. Again, you could also have done 8 divided by negative 12, or negative 16 over 3 divided by 8. Whichever way you do it, you get the same common ratio. If you know both A and R, so in each of these you know both A and R, so you can work out any term. You can work out the nth term, which is denoted by un. Really, this is the formula for working out un. It is bum, ba, da, bum, 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 un equals a r to the n take one. Yeah. Let's try some examples then. So using un equals a r to the n take one and r equals un plus one over un. You don't really need that. Uh, let's find the tenth term of the geometric sequence three. 12, 48, 
192. So the first thing to do, the same as your arithmetic sequences, just start by writing down what you know. So if you know your first term, write down what A is, A equals, whatever it is. If you know your common ratio, or if you can work it out, write down what that would be. And the nth term, well, that's just going to be N. So here, the first term is good, that's just three, so you can write down A equals three. Your common ratio, it's easy enough to work out, as I said, you don't really need this. All you do is you do 12 divided by three, which gives you four. And you can easily see you're multiplying by four every time. And your nth term, N is going to be Perfect, n is going to be 10 because we're asked to work out the 10th term of this geometric sequence. Therefore, to work out the 10th term, you would have the formula un equals a r to the n take one, but because it's the 10th term, you'd have u10. So u10 would equal a r to the 10 take away one. I'm not gonna write down 10 take away one, I know that's nine, so it's a r to the nine. Perfect. From there, you can sub in your values. You know the value of A is 3. We know the value of R is 4. So we can say then that is going to be 3 times 4 to the power of 9. Work that out. Put that into your magical box. And it gives you an answer of 786,432. High five. Well done. Example two, a geometric sequence of positive terms has a third term, 18, and a seventh term, 1,458. Find the fifth term. Once again, just start writing down what you know for any of these questions with arithmetic or geometric sequences. So if you know the first term or the common ratio or whatever the nth term would be. So here, well, what are we told? We're told that the third term is 18. So we know from this that u3 must equal 18. And we're also told that the seventh term is 1,458. So we know then that u7 equals that. Where do we go from there? How do we find this fifth term? What could we do? Well, really what we need is we need to work out, in order to work out the fifth term, we'd have u5, we'd need to work out a, we need to work out r, and we know n would just be five. So we need to somehow work out A and R. Anybody see a way of doing that? Perfect. First of all, let's think about this a little more. We've told that U3 equals 18. So we know then that U3 would equal A R to the power of three take away one. So in other words, A R squared, and that would equal 18. We're also told that U7 equals 1,458. So in other words, U7 would equal a r to the seven take away one, or in other words, a r to the power of six. So we know then that u seven equals a r to the power of six, but we know that's this 1,458. We're still needing to find the value of a or the value of r, so how could we go about doing it? Does anybody see a way? Harry. Perfect. Well done, Harry. Really, because this a r squared equals 18, and because your AR to the power of 6 equals this 1,458, if you divide this AR to the power of 6 by AR squared, so if you divide them, that is the same as dividing this 1,458 by 18. So really what you're doing is you're doing this AR to the power of 6. If you divide that by your AR squared, well, really you've done this U7 divided by U3, so you've done 1,458 divided by 18. How does that help you, though? We well, can see from there that A's would cancel out and it would leave you with R to the power of 4. Perfect. So you'd have R to the power of 4 and that would equal, if you divide them, you get 81. If we know then that R to the power of 4 is 81, max, what's the value of R? Good. It can be positive or negative 3. Woo! So we know we've got positive or negative 3. Would you have both answers then? No, you wouldn't. Good, because it's saying that it's a geometric sequence of positive terms. So you must be multiplying by a positive number each time. If you multiply by the negative, then you're going to have a positive, then a negative, then a positive, then a negative, and so on. So we know that R cannot be negative 3. It has to just be positive 3. So we know R is equal to 3. How can we go from there then to work out the value of A? Because in order to work out this fifth term, U5, we need to know the value of A. We need to know the value of R. R we found, but we need A. Good. What you can do from there is you could just take this value of R. So if we know R is equal to 3, and you can sub it into, say, this. You can sub it in here. 
So you'd have a times three squared would equal 18. That lets you find the value of a. You could also have subbed it in here. It doesn't really matter where you sub it. So we know r is equal to three. We can sub that in to find the value of a. Let's say we're subbing it into that a r squared equals 18, which I showed you in the last page. Well, you can say then that a times three squared would equal 18. So in other words, 9a equals 18 and a would equal two. Woo! So we now know then that a is equal to two, r is equal to three, and n would equal, what's n gonna be? Brilliant, well done. n is going to be five because it says find the fifth term. So we know n is going to be 5. Therefore, to work out the fifth term, we've got un equals a r to the n take 1, which means then we're going to have u5 would equal, replace a with 2, replace r with 3, and replace n with 5. So it's 5 take away 1. Work that out, and that becomes 2 times 3 to the power of 4, which means then you would have 162. That is what it works out to be. Woo! Try the questions in the Unit 2 booklet, page 25. Check your answers as you go. Any problems, let me know. If you still need the booklet, give me an email and I'll fire it off to you. Best of luck. See how you are with these. Bye.